Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome back to Kerbal Gets Real. We are now in the second half of 1961. And in the second half of 1961, well, we have Hermes 3 fast on its way to the Red Planet, where hopefully we shall capture and we shall get a nice detailed map of Mars's surface. Mars seems to be rather topical at the moment because, well, as I sit to record this, I have actually just watched the Perseverance launch on a ULA Atlas V. But back to our own space agency now, and this is going to be the first launch of the second half of 1961. On the 10th of July, we have Artemis LLP number 6. And if everything goes successfully with this launch, well, this will be the last time that we launch an Artemis LLP mission. I did mention in the last episode that we can complete this contract up to five times, and this will be the fifth landing if we do perform this. Obviously, Artemis LLP-1 failed. It was the first one that we tried. But ever since Artemis 1, no, every single one of these missions has been a success. Now, the next thing I think I want to do with the moon after this Artemis LLP series will be to send a probe that we hope to return because, well, we have contracts to do that and it'll be a nice little bit more science that we can use. We can exploit the moon and go for something like that. But here we have our little Artemis LLP number six, touching down in the Sea of Tranquility. So, with the success of Artemis LLP number six, once again, we gained a rather large amount of science. So, we're gonna go in and we're gonna upgrade the Space Center because obviously we get the upgrade points from gaining science. And another thing that I want to do is I want to go into research and development and actually pick up those mature capsules. That means we unlock the Apollo capsules and because we have started researching that, what we can do is we can go and get our pilots trained up in using that straight away. But I'm gonna wanna hire some new people first. So we have Bonnie Ellis, a new pilot, Johnny Peters, our first ever engineer, and Ellen Cox, our first ever scientist. Now, we've gone for engineers and scientists because those new capsules can actually do scientific equipment that we need an engineer or a scientist to perform. We can no longer get by with just pilots on those, unfortunately. So that's the main reason why I have started picking those up. And, well, I've never had engineers and scientists before just because, well, I thought with a one-man capsule, it's probably best to have a pilot flying those. But if you didn't catch that, we just went in and we picked up three very important contracts indeed. We went for our first crewed lunar flyby, our first crewed lunar orbit, and the first human lunar landing. First human moon landing, you might say. And well, that gave us around 13 million funds in total, which, of course, we are going to go in and I have basically upgraded our space center to, well, the max. We've upgraded our mission control. We've upgraded the astronaut complex. We've put a whole load more funds into research and development and the vehicle assembly building. And we have gone and built a 1500 ton launch pad, which obviously we are going to need a bigger launch pad if we want to get to the moon with humans on board. But here we have the first vehicle assembly building section in one of these videos that I've done for, well, a couple of episodes. And the reason why I've not really been including these in the episodes is because obviously I've been doing the build series on parallel to the yearly episodes that are coming out. But I've already done Hermes 6 for this year and there were more things that I wanted to construct. This here is going to be the Hydra launch vehicle. And now it's called the Hydra after obviously the big lizard-like thing with nine heads. I think it had, it was either seven or nine. I can't quite remember, but as well as that, it's gonna have a Hydra locks core stage. And now thinking Hydra, Hydro locks, it kind of sounds similar, which is why I went for that. 
it is going to be supplemented there by two LR89 NA6 boosters because obviously it's going to be rather difficult using just that LR87 LH2 engine to lift us off the launch pad. So that's why we have got those on the side and obviously that gives us more than enough delta v to get well six tons to orbit on the 150 ton launch pad which is absolutely amazing the fuel payload ratio for that rocket is brilliant but now another thing that i want to be working on this is going to be the lunar scan orbiter We've done a lot at the moon, but we've still got things that we can go and do. So this spacecraft, what it's going to do is we're going to stick one of those scansats on there because, well, we've gone to Mars and we have also gone to Venus to try and get those scansats. And we've done one of Earth, but we haven't done one of our closest neighbor. No, we haven't scanned the moon. So the idea of this satellite, this spacecraft, is to get over to the moon put it into a polar inclination so that we can scan the entire thing and then just keep it in space for a while whilst it does do that all-important scanning. Another thing that I've done with this spacecraft is I have included all of the science in those two probe cores that I have not actually yet got from the moon, so there are a few new recent upgrades to scientific experiments that I have gained that I have decided, yeah, let's throw them into that lunar scan orbiter so we can get absolutely all of the science that we possibly could with this rocket. The very last probe core stage is going to be the stage that actually does our inclination change as well as capturing at the moon and then another little thing that I want it to do is to get it from that roughly 500 kilometer orbit down a little bit lower once it's finished its scan so we can start getting science from the low lunar space. That one little probe core stage can do all of that. What I've just been working on was the translunar injection stage and then and finally, we're going to attach one of those new Hydra One rockets to the bottom. So, the next thing on our calendar is Hermes 3, the Mars approach on the 14th of October 1961. Now, we had a bit of an issue with Hermes 3 here. We were unable to communicate with it. It was just simply too far away from Earth with that antenna. We were unable to talk to this probe at all which was a bit of a problem. However, because I am using MechJeb, I am still able to complete the burn. It's a little bit cheaty, I guess you could say. However, I still kind of believe that it's allowed, I guess, because if you think about it, we would have pre-programmed this probe to fire when it reached Mars. Unfortunately, I am not able to separate, so I am not able to get the orbit that I would like because obviously we can't use that probe core stage. Neither can we activate any of the scientific equipment on that probe or the ScanSat. So at the moment, it's really just a bit of dead weight floating around Mars. But I will keep it up in Kerbalism just to check and see when we get connection. But now, here we have, on the 19th of October, 1961, Daedalus 2. And let me tell you, something disastrous is about to happen. That's right, one of the E-1 engines on that first stage of the Icarus rocket failed halfway through the flight and caused the entire spacecraft to basically rapidly disassemble in the middle of the air. I wasn't able to activate the launch escape system because I was quite busy trying to take very pretty photographs and cinematics of that scene, so Yes, I wasn't quick enough, unfortunately, to actually activate that. So what we had to do, really, is kind of how Gemini actually would have done a launch escape and got our two brave astronauts, Albert Harper and Karen Richards, out of that capsule, out of kind of their seats, and then we used their own personal parachutes to return them safely to the ground. It's a bit of a shame doing it like this, but... At least we had no loss of life. That would have been really catastrophic if these two wonderful people had died. 
So, yeah, that really was a bit of a tragedy for our space agency. Although, as I did just say, it could have been a lot, lot worse. It could have been a hell of a lot worse. It is very fortunate that we didn't lose either of those because, well, Karen Richards was the first person to ever go on an EVA and Albert Harper was the first ever person in space. So two quite important astronauts in our space agency and it really would have been a big, big down note had we lost them. But yeah, things go wrong. Test light causes all kinds of failures and bad stuff happens, but uh, we've got we've to work through it. And I think we're going to have to go in, we're going to have to inspect the Icarus rocket series and really make sure that it is suitable for launching the Daedalus missions because we want to keep our astronauts as safe as possible. But next on the list, it will be the first launch of that Hydra One launch vehicle and it will be the LSO the Lunar Scan Orbiter. But here we do, we have it, the LSO-1 on the 26th of October 1961. And this is the first time that I have showcased a Hydra-1 launch and unfortunately it is at night. I don't like doing these launches at night because I would like you to see kind of the whole system in work, but no, it was at night just so that we could launch into the plane of the moon. So. I did decide to cut out a rather large amount of that launch, but it was successful. There's not that many parts on it to go wrong, if I'm particularly honest. It's just that LR87 LH2 core stage, as well as the two LR89 NA6 boosters. And of course, we all light them at the same time on the launch pad. So yeah, the, really the success rate of that rocket should be quite high. But here we have our little inclination change at the moon. And what I did is as soon as I entered the moon's sphere of influence, I kind of fiddled around with the maneuver node to really get it to as close as 90 degrees as I possibly could. I'm sure I could have changed the inclination before I even got to the moon's sphere of influence, but I personally find it just easier doing it once you are in the sphere of influence, if I'm going to be particularly honest. I'm sure there are more efficient ways of doing it, but this thing, this little probe core, has more than enough delta v to make that inclination change as well as to capture and then once well like i said in the vehicle assembly building to lower its orbit to get that lovely tasty science that we can get from space low around the moon rather than space high and obviously space low around the moon is more worthwhile science it's just the way that ksb decides it so we're gonna try and go for it because well we get more science points that way but we were successful in our capture burn at the moon. We started up that scan sad, so hopefully shortly, we should have a lovely surface map of the moon. But that was actually the last launch that we are going to be doing in 1961, because the next thing that we have got on our calendar will be the reworked Daedalus series. I say reworked, we're probably not going to do anything to it, if I'm going to be particularly honest. Now, I would just like to use the last little bit of this video to say a big thank you to everyone that has already subscribed to my channel because, well, yesterday I did finally hit that 100 subscriber milestone. And yeah, no, that was very, very, very exciting indeed. So yeah, a big thank you to everyone that has subscribed already. Thank you so much. I'm going to keep up with this content and obviously I've got other series that I am going to be working on, but this is going to be my main one. I just have little side projects that I do at the same time, but that was the end of 1961, I guess, is what I also need to say. And you will catch the rest in the next episode. Well, not the rest of 1961, the 1962. 1962 in the next episode. If you have enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? If you have really enjoyed this video and would like to keep up with the content on my channel, please do subscribe. I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.